So I did a little digging to find out what makes most businesses fail, and the result of this study might be interesting to you. Hey everyone, I'm John Timmerman. I talk about the world's most exciting business, sales, and marketing strategies so that both you and I can grow our businesses faster and better. And today we're talking about marketing strategy, how to build a simple marketing strategy. Because after doing some digging, we found that CB Insights found that 14% of businesses fail due to limited or no marketing strategy. Now, of course, you're looking at me and you're like, he's biased, he's in marketing. But if you go ask any entrepreneur out there, any business owner, any CEO, the majority of the companies are going to tell you that marketing is the reason to fuel growth or the reason that growth is fueled. Now there's sectors in the government space that are based on RFQs and RFPs and bid work. Those typically don't need marketing on the customer acquisition or client acquisition side. They need marketing on the employer, I'm sorry, employee acquisition side. So many of them will say, we don't need marketing. But if they were to do marketing, then they would have an easier time recruiting employees and executive team members and entry level workers. So those companies out there that say they don't believe in marketing, but are having trouble hiring people, they should start believing in marketing. But 14%, uh, back to the study, CB Insights, 14% of businesses fail completely close due to lack of or insignificant marketing strategy. So in this video, I wanna tell you two of the best marketing strategies I've ever seen to kickstart growth. One is on the B to C side, business to consumer, and one is on the B to B side. So let's get into it. All right, let's start B2B. So in the B2B space, you're typically working with other businesses on either service or products, right? You might be a manufacturer that's selling your product to different business sectors, or you might be a service company like we are, offering marketing services or legal services or accounting services or janitorial services, any kind of services, right? So B2B, what's the best marketing strategy for B2B? Now, typically, B2B, the first thing you start to think about is, okay, we need an outbound sales team, uh, trade shows, we need to get on the trade show schedule, we, we need to get into industry publications and get some PR in these publications. These are all kind of the standard ways to generate business in B2B. Now, forward-thinking B2B, especially in the SaaS industry or tech space, are starting to adopt content marketing, and so they're starting to pay attention to SEO, they're starting to pay attention to email newsletters and sort of more digital marketing, right? But but this is a beast. This is gonna take a long time and probably a lot of money to get up and started. I know this because we do this every day for our clients. So if you want kind of a down and dirty strategy that I think is very powerful if you execute it right, it is to create your own brand that supports your company or rather is supported by your company. So let's take an example. You're an accounting firm, you've got legacy clients, you've been around for 10 years, 20 years, something like that, and you're looking to kind of modernize and do some marketing without spending $2 million across every single marketing channel you could possibly hit this year. So here's what you do. You create a brand that's called Money by accounting firm XYZ, whatever your accounting firm's name is, right? So Money. Now it's a general one that's probably taken by another uh, brand, but find a brand that you can support and then start to gather people around that brand. So your company looks like the sponsor. The brand doesn't look like it's your company. It looks like it's a brand who you have now sponsored and you at all costs try to maintain that those optics because people will trust this independent brand if it's got a sponsor, but they'll have a harder time trusting if they know it's your brand because they know that you're just trying to get them as a client. So launch this independent brand, separate website, and I would start by hosting an event because it's the way that you can invite the people that matter to your growth to an event as long as you are adding value and it's a valuable event it's not just another trade show it's got to have a unique aspect in this event is maybe where you invite one to two kind of prominent speakers I wouldn't go for the celebrities because they're gonna cost a ton of money hundreds of thousands of dollars but go for the influencers in the space the ones that have podcasts the ones that have YouTube shows that have a hundred thousand two hundred thousand three hundred thousand followers and have them be sort of the keynote or co keynote of of this kickoff event and make it a kickoff event. Have exciting value packed training, have maybe software companies come and display their software and give discounts. 
really make it for the visitor. Invest the money that you're going to invest in marketing this year into this event, because not only are you gonna have this flagship event, but now you can use the event as all the marketing for the rest of this brand supported by your company. So you can have podcast episodes filmed on site at the event. You can have podcasts leading up to the event, interviewing people who are going to be at the event. You can have social media channels dedicated to this brand. And what will happen is you will get all sorts of industry uh, important people caring about this event. And then by default, you as the sponsor get to catch everything that kind of falls in and around that event. So you can be on these podcast interviews. You can encourage other influencers and other people to bring their podcasts in and film it in the podcast booth at the event. You can be on their podcast. They can be on your podcast. You can be on their YouTube shows. They can be on your YouTube shows. And you start to create all of this content around this event. And this will last the entire year until the event next year. And so you're focusing on building this brand and collecting this massive amount of community members around this brand, money or money X by accounting firm XYZ or something like that, right? You're, you're engaging people in this brand and then you as the ninja sponsor that are supporting it get to participate in all the value in and around on top of below next to this event and all the buzz that's surrounding this event. Now, eventually people will figure it out. They're going to be like, oh, this company just started this event. But if there's enough value added by the time that kind of word gets out, nobody will care because they're already getting the value. So B2B players out there, focus on an event, build this event. What would you want at this event? Make it worth your travel, make it worth your time on a video, a Zoom you know, display of the event. What would you want to see there? And then try your best to spend your budget doing that. And then leverage the attention that you're getting from other influencers and other publications that are featuring the event or listing the event. Try to leverage that into other PR opportunities, other content opportunities, all right, and create content around the event. This is one of the better marketing strategies that I've seen for kind of up and coming B2B players that are trying to make a dent and they don't have the millions of dollars to spend on airport billboards and uh, sponsorship of actual existing trade shows because that's going to run you fifty or hundred thousand dollars most likely okay so try this one out let me know all right got another statistic for you here 42 percent of businesses fail because the product isn't unique enough or valuable enough it's just not a good product so how do you solve that well pretty simple answer really is to make sure you do your due diligence when you're in product development phase or product testing phase. You've got to make sure that the product is going to be useful. We are past the days where you can just launch an Amazon FBA business selling a product that 15 other people are selling and make $100,000 off the scraps of people that are going to buy yours. Same thing with drop shipping. We're past the days where you can set up a drop shipping Shopify store and take products from manufacturer A and then drop ship it to the customer that orders it. It's too saturated. People have figured it out. We all want quality. And so you've got to make sure that your product or your service is quality. So I want to shift over to the B to C space because this is typically where companies are focusing on selling products to people. And if you don't have a good, useful product, you're not going to grow your company. But there is a nugget here, a marketing nugget that I would like to talk to you about. So almost half, we'll call it 42% of businesses fail because the product's not that great. So first, you've got to use surveys. You've got to use customer testing. You've got to get your product out into the world. I've told this story before, but I love this story. My wife and I started a jeans company as kind of a side hustle when we were into CrossFit and our thighs were getting bigger and all the jeans that we found were, we could find stretchy jeans, but we couldn't find jeans that were fit for more athletic legs. And so we created our own jeans company. We bootstrapped it, we got some prototypes, and when we got enough of one of each size, we went and bought a booth at a CrossFit event and had people come over and try the jeans on. And as long as they left us a review, then they got a free t-shirt or a hat. They didn't even have to buy the jeans. So what that did is it was R&D. It was research and development. We figured out, here's the patterns that are good. We found out that the men's jeans had a little bit of a baggy, baggy crotch in them, so they didn't like that look. The women's jeans actually fit really well, but they didn't like the cell phone pocket. I would say 50% of them didn't like the cell phone pocket in the side of the leg. All right, so we made some adjustments, put it in a new order for some higher quantities, and then sold more of those jeans 
much more than we would have if we didn't do that sort of R&D phase. So here's what I would like you to do. Number one, if you're just in product development and you're thinking about launching a new product, or maybe you only have like 10 or 20 customers, here's what you do. You do the same thing that we did. You go find an event where there's going to be hundreds or thousands of people in your target demographic walking by these booths, right? You need to make sure that this is a physical trade show or conference that people will physically be going to. Digital won't work in this sort of instance. Set up a booth, make your booth look nice. Do something creative. It doesn't have to be expensive. You don't have to buy a huge trade show booth for ten or twenty thousand dollars. We did an event for a client earlier this year where we built a log cabin type booth and outfitted it with Adirondack chairs and a fake fireplace and we did the whole thing for about ten thousand dollars. Now I realize if you're just a single person operation, ten grand is a lot, but you don't need that either. When we did our jeans, I built a booth just from basically one by sixes and two by fours to make two little fitting rooms and then we just got banners and put them around this wood structure and it, it worked really great in a 10 by 10 space. So you go here and you then stand in front of your booth and you give the products away for free or you let people try the product, ask them for their review and then you give them something for free. A hat, t-shirt, something where you can spend, you know, one, two, three, four thousand dollars and you can get hundreds of t-shirts or, or hats. And everybody walking down these things, they want a free t-shirt or hat. Doesn't matter how many they get, right? Don't go cheap, don't go like free USB because nobody cares about those things. T-shirt or hat or something similar to that, something useful. This cost, this one, two, three, thousand dollars and plus your five hundred or a thousand dollars for the booth space this is your cost of research and development to make sure your product is exactly what people want and are willing to pay for okay let's assume you already did that you've got good validation that you have a good product next is to go on social media go on the internet and you can use a site there's one i think it's called imai it's an influencer marketing platform uh, it's pretty low cost you can try you can do a free trial and you can search for influencers on tiktok youtube and other social media platforms, and you can target it by your geographical area or topic or, or whatever it is. And use this to find small, everyday influencers. This isn't like micro influencers. This isn't macro influencers. This is not celebrity influencers. This is not the typical sort of influencers that you're thinking about. These are people that have a thousand followers, but those followers are their friends and family and people they're connected with, and they engage with a lot of their content. So look at the engagement rate. Find them. Five, 500 of them if you can. Out of those 500, here's what you're going to do. If you've got a low cost product, you're going to send them an a DM or a message and ask them if you can send them one of your products so that they can try it and give you some feedback. That's it. That's your initial message. Want to send you a product for free. Just want you to try it and give us your feedback so we know if it's a good product or if we need some improvements. When they say yes or no, you'll probably get 50% of them to say yes, give or take, depending on the product or the industry. Then you say, okay, great. What's your address? You'll get maybe 30% of them to actually reply with their address. And then you'll get some that trickle in. Send them the product. And when the product is in route, say, great, here's your tracking number. Here's the product. When you get it, test it out. Let us know what you think. And if you feel like creating a quick video on your review of it or how you're using it or a picture, that'd be great. We'd love to use it in our social content if you're willing. And then you'll probably get, an, again, around 30% of them to actually do it. So out of 500, maybe you'll get 100, 150 people who actually send back one, two, three different kinds of videos. Then you take that content and you post it on your social. You run all of that content via paid advertising and you let the algorithms test which content performs best. Now, obviously, you might have to touch up some of the content. You might have to do some slight editing, put some text in there, you know, filter the, the photo a bit, work in Photoshop just a little bit, but don't go over production because people in today's world, they like real content. They like real people's cell phone content and you measure which ones perform well. Also, side note, make sure that they're not hitting on your product in the review. You don't want to run that as an ad, obviously. So take those out and put the good reviews in, run them as your paid media, put them on social media, tag the person if, if they allow you to. And you've now got your first round of hundreds of social proof of people that love this product. You've got your first hundred pieces of content for social media. You've got your first hundred pieces of content for paid media. And now the additional money you have to spend is for somebody to manage it and some of the ad spend to deploy it on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or TikTok in the form of ads. I love this strategy because it combines content marketing, creative, design, video, influencer marketing, social media, even dabbling into email marketing, to paid media, did I just say paid media already? All of it all into one campaign. And 
the best part is it's all social proof. It's all other people saying that they love your product. I love this strategy. Now, one caveat, you can't do this if you've got a really expensive product because you're not going to spend, you're not going to send out a $3,000 product to 250 people. That's a very expensive review acquisition strategy. So here's what you do instead. Going back to my first B2B example, you reach out to slightly larger influencers in your space, the ones that have 100,000, 200,000. Usually we go for 200,000 followers um, with a decent engagement rate on platforms like YouTube. On TikTok, the followers don't matter as much. It's much more about views and, and engagement. But we reach out to the larger influencers, the ones that take pride in their content. They do this for full time. They also might be affiliate. They have affiliate relationships with brands. We reach out to them and invite them to a really amazing event, private event, to engage in content creation, networking, product demonstrations, and just a really good, valuable event for an influencer in your industry. Now again, it can't be all about you because they have to have value. They don't want to come to an event where you're just trying to sign them up as an affiliate or something like that. They've got to have fun. There has to be activities. They have to be able to network. They have to try some good food. So I would reach out to maybe anywhere from 10 to 30 of these influencers and then plan this event so that it's really, really valuable. Invite them to the event. When they get there, you go crazy with content creation. You have a videographer there, a photographer, and they're filming everything that they're doing. And you're hosting podcast episodes with these influencers. And you're just massively creating a ton of content. And you get their permission to approve and let you use that content on your social media, in your paid media, on your email marketing, on your website. You get them to sign up as an affiliate or participate as an influencer to try more products of yours. This in-person meeting is going to help you develop stronger relationships with influencers than if you were just transacting over email or some influencer marketing platform. We've done this one time uh, last year with a client. We're doing it again for another client shortly here, and it's a super exciting strategy if you have a more expensive product. Oh, this chair doesn't spin very well. Whoa, there. All right, everybody, hope you found this video valuable. I was trying to do some cool little transition there for my videographer, my editing team, but not sure that worked out very well. What the hell are you doing? Hopefully you found these two strategies, uh, kind of two, two and a half strategies, because the second one was if you have a low cost product, you do the everyday influencers. If you have a high cost product, then you do the influencer event. B2B, you host your own event underneath your own brand and you branch that brand out as the focus rather than your company in order to build a little bit more trust. So hopefully you found these valuable. They still cost money and time and resources, but if you're going to build a big badass company, you've got to do that. There's no really real way around it. However, both of these strategies are going to save you millions of dollars in earned media and paid media versus the traditional kind of structure of siloing your Google ads and your Facebook ads and your event budget and so on and so forth. Okay. So hopefully you found it valuable. If you did, forward it to your colleagues or people in a networking group that you're part of, and hopefully they can find some value as well. And if you're interested in free resources to help you with your sales and marketing, head over to my website, jtimmerman.com. I give you things like free email subject line templates, the ones that are working the best for us right now, uh, marketing checklist to launch your e-commerce business or your e-commerce product, all sorts of templates that you can use. So jtimmerman.com, head over there. You can download the stuff for free and we'll see you in the next video.